Hello, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. Today I would like to show you a Con 6M transitional alto saxophone. This was made in Elkhart, Indiana by the CG Con Company in 1935. This is called a transitional model because this is made in the years between the model of the New Wonder Series 2, also sometimes called the Chewberry, although that is erroneous, and if you've watched my other video, you know that that really gets my goat, because it's just wrong. It's wrong, I tell you. This uh, is basically towards the end of the transition from the New Wonder Series 2 to the M Series saxophones, called, sometimes called the Naked Lady saxophones, the Artist Series saxophones. Uh, they're called the Naked Lady because there's a pentagon on the bell engraving, and there is a topless woman in it. Uh, this is has most of the features of the 6M. Now, the M is the model designation that Khan used for saxophones. The 6M is their alto saxophone. Um, the 4M was their soprano. The 10M was their tenor, which you may have heard of. The 12M was the baritone, which you also may have heard of. Uh, and this does not say 6M on the serial number information here. It is probably just a year or two before that would have started happening. Um, but for this is basically a 6M, just with some extra features and a little bit more intrigue and interest because it's a transitional model. One of the features that's additional is this swiveling thumb rest. And um, it's actually pretty comfortable in, in, in usage, although it tends to go into one place and then stay there. It doesn't exactly move around that much uh, unless you've got bad technique and you're moving your hand a whole lot. But most of the other stuff you're going to recognize here from the 6M. You've got your underslung octave mechanism, got your microtuner, uh, your 6M style key work, which is extremely comfortable, uh, very close together, very fast. Uh, you've got your 6M style pinky cluster here. Um, and this one in particular is rather interesting because I'm not sure if you can see this, but on the neck it's marked STD apostrophe D M. Um, and this standard M. Um, stands for Metro. Now on later versions of this, from a few years later, this may have said standard M here and then actually Metro would be stamped here above the serial number. There were other ones that said standard N and then on the, on the body for later ones would be stamped National. And then later on in, this, in the 6M serial range, uh, the Metro and National went away but there would be ones that were stamped with a numeral 8 in Roman, Roman numerals, so V-I-I-I. Um, and no one knows exactly what these are. Some people say the VIII, Roman numeral 8, stands for the 8th workbench, where like the best con craftsman was, or something like that. Um, no one's actually taken the time to take any measurements of the bore or the neck and see if anything is totally different, including me, which I really I should do one of these days. Uh, but what most people say is that the ones that are stamped standard M or Metro on the body or National on the body, standard N on the neck, or the 8 stamp uh, seem to play better than the other ones. Now, when you're dealing with handmade instruments, um, it's difficult to say, you know, w whether one whole run is going to be quite a bit different than another or whether you would just be better off playing individual instruments and finding which one plays best for you because if you buy one of these sight unseen, it could be a lemon, and you might buy one that doesn't have the stamp, and it plays better than any of them that do have the stamp, just because they're all individual instruments. Now you'll notice this has the microtuner here. What this is is basically a way to put your mouthpiece all the way onto the neck here, and then tune by actually altering the length of the neck. Screw it right, it goes in, screw it left, and it comes out. And there's a rather complex mechanism in here. I'll well, actually, because I completely disassembled this and cleaned it out and overhauled it and everything. This should come out pretty easily and go back in pretty easily. And I can show you what this mechanism looks like. It's basically um, a series of tubes <laughs> sliding against each other. And there you can see. So there's the neck part. That's a guide right there. There's the threads. You've got your internal neck there. And you can see there's got a little cutout for the octave pip there. And you get it all tight. It has to be airtight. Um, you know, you've got two pipes sliding against each other. After a while, they can get worn, or uh, if grit gets in there, 
Um, there can be scratches that cause an air leak. So you have to make sure that there's no leakage from in here because a leak in your neck affects every other note on the horn, especially a leak so close to the octave pip um, can really give you a lot of problems. But when these are in good working condition, they're actually, I like having them. Uh, because when you put your mouthpiece on, uh, you can change just the length and not really the volume, right? So the internal volume of the mouthpiece, if you take it off the cork, then because the diameter, the inside diameter of here is different than the inside diameter of your mouthpiece, you're changing the length and the volume. And those both have uh, separate but uh, interacting effects. So there's the neck for a 6M transitional marked standard M right here. Now the key work on these instruments is extremely comfortable. Some people have an issue with the left hand pinky table, which is this kind of diamond style. Uh, SMLs have these as well. I find it to be very comfortable and when they're set up well, uh, they're extremely fast. Basically the key work on these instruments, particularly the altos for the transitionals and the 6Ms, is very, very comfortable. Uh, the 10Ms are pretty comfortable, but I wouldn't say quite as comfortable as the 6Ms. And the 10M is the tenor instrument. Now something interesting, so the serial number on this horn is 268730. I happen to have for my personal collection a con warranty card, 268731. So the warranty is one serial number from this instrument that came through my shop. What are the odds? So this is probably the closest these two articles have been to each other in 80 years, which is pretty interesting. So this is the original guarantee that would have come with it. Now the transitional instruments, there's actually a couple different versions, and I'll show you another one. This is a slightly earlier version of the transitional. See here next to this instrument. This was made in 1931. This has split bell keys rather than same side bell keys. It has the old style uh, pinky cluster, like the new Wonder Series 2. Um, the Palm keys are slightly different in location and spacing. The left hand stack is slightly different in location and action in particular. Uh, if you look a little closer here, you can see the, although the pearls are in similar locations, the mechanism is completely different. And it causes it to feel quite different under the fingers because the direction of the motion is changed. You can see also the same thing is evident on the lower stack. The shape of the E flat and C have changed completely. The shape of the side F sharp has changed completely. And obviously the mechanism that drives these split bell keys is completely different than the mechanism that drives the same side bell keys here. And you'll also see uh, the engraving is different. This kind of has like an Art Deco appearance, which I actually, I really like. I really like these horns, although they're not as comfortable as these. Well, this has the Naked Lady engraving. Also, the necks are different. The earlier one is overslung, has a micro tuner. This one has um, got a little bit of gold plate on it as well, which would have been kind of a custom order, because usually they were all silver or uh, silver and gold throughout the whole instrument, but this one just has it on the neck. You can see the neck tenon is different. So these necks are not interchangeable. Another interesting thing is I happen to have a warranty for one of these. So you can see even that the warranty changed over those couple years. It's got different stuff, different stuff in the back. Although, interestingly, these are both tested and inspected by the same person. So there you go. Con Transitional Altos. This is a 1935, this is a 1931. Uh, very different instruments. Um, and particularly, the later transitionals such as this one that have the 6M keywork. Um, and this one has the standard M marking on the neck. 
are highly sought after and they're excellent instruments. Uh, the intonation is very good, the tone is very good, um, the construction is excellent, really hard to beat. Uh, you'll see rolled tone holes on these, which means that the edge of the tone hole is rolled over. Uh, on the one hand this is good because uh, it gives you a little bit more surface area and a more forgiving surface for the pa pads to seal against. Uh, on the negative side though, if uh, they are unlevel and they hardly ever are, it is very difficult to get them perfectly level. You can get them very close, but not perfectly because you can't remove any material. So con giveth and con taketh away. For more information on the con transitional altos, uh, check the description in this video here. Uh, there's quite a lot of information, um, especially considering that you're talking about a serial run over the course of about six or seven years, and so many things changed, and not, and it's really. Not, not too much is known about what exactly changed when and what some of these things mean, like the standard M neck. No one really knows, although there's a lot of uh, feeling about it. There's no actual information out there that's straight from the source, unfortunately. So, my name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. I hope you found this helpful, informative, interesting. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to get in touch. You can find uh, my information on my website, which is linked to in the description. You can leave a comment here. Uh, any way I can help you out with anything saxophonic, just let me know. And thanks for watching.